Creating a life that is authentic, bold, and purposeful takes audacity. It takes disruption. That is what it means to be a professional troublemaker. Professional Troublemaker is a book, a podcast, and a life habit. I'm your host, Lovey Jai Jones, bestseller of books, aficionado of authenticity, and sorceress of side eyes, here to bring you perspectives, conversations, and deep dives about culture, business, leadership, life. Plus, my conversations are with world movers and change agents who have gotten where they are through their tenacity, their truth-telling, and commitment to making good trouble. My hope is that this show compels you to do big things in a world where we have so much to fear. Let this be an arena of audacity for you. Let's get into it. So, as you know, I wrote a new children's book called Little Troublemaker Makes a Mess, and it drops out in the world on May 2nd. Do you know or are you raising a little troublemaker of your own? You know those kids, the ones with electric energy and an audacious spirit. They need this book. This is the book that I needed when I was little. In Little Troublemaker Makes a Mess, we meet little Lovey, a girl who loves her mom and her sister, and she also loves doing kind things for other people. But those kind things don't always have the best results. So in this book, we find out what happens when your big heart causes you to break some big rules. And what to ask yourself before you act. It is something I am deeply proud of. Her little rebellious attitude and heart of gold are sure to inspire kids with big personalities and huge hearts and even bigger feelings. So you can pre-order it. Little Troublemaker Makes a Mess, anywhere books are sold, hardcover or the audiobook. You can also go to littletroublemakerbook.com or wherever you buy books. And like the rest of my books, I'm hoping this book's loan somebody courage so people would feel more empowered to lean into their unique strengths and make good trouble. And on today's episode, I am joined by my partner in Little Troublemaker Makes a Mess, illustrator Joey Spioto, who has been incredible in helping me bring this dream, this vision to life. He's built this world for Little Lovey that is colorful, energetic, that's bold, that's fun. So I really wanted to talk to him about the process around creating this world and how he became an illustrator. So in this episode, in our interview, you're going to learn more about Joey. But let me give you his bio first. Joey Spioto is an author and illustrator of several books, including the hit series Grumpy Unicorn from Scholastic, as well as the wildly popular Alien Next Door from Titan Books. Based off the classic film franchise Alien, his latest book, Little Troublemaker Makes a Mess, was written by me, three-time New York Times bestselling author, Lovey Jai Jones. Before working in children's books, Joey was a regularly featured artist at the world-famous Gallery 1988 in Los Angeles, where his artwork has been commissioned by some of Hollywood's most talented filmmakers, actors, comedians, and musicians, including J.J. Abrams, Joss Whedon, Vince Gilligan, Weird Al Yankovic, and many more. Joey has a degree in illustration from Art Center College of Design in Pasadena and started as concept artist in the film and video game industry, working on a variety of projects that include the holiday classic The Polar Express from Warner Brothers. He also worked on The Sims and more from Electronic Arts. Joey lives in Southern California with his wife, Kristen, two very energetic young kids, and one very sleepy old dog. Let's get into it. I'm always curious to find out from guests that I interview on this podcast, like, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Um, I had different stages of what I wanted to be, but I always knew I wanted to be an artist. I had a Mm. brief dream of being a baseball player when I was like seven. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and then I got I got hit with a baseball. The wind knocked Ooh. out of me, and uh, that ended my dreams of being a baseball player. <laughs> but you've like, always like, good here. <laughs> you were like, "No, I'm straight. This is not it." Yeah, I'd like to sit in at, at, at a desk and draw and be quiet, and uh, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> when did you start drawing? I I never stopped. You know, all, mm. all kids all kids draw. Uh, which I've seen with my own kids, they draw and they just kind of create stuff, whatever, you know, whatever they see or whatever is in their mind. And then at some point 
I don't know if it's in school or just through growing up, they just kind of stop. Mm. And uh, I never did. I just kind of always kept doing it. And I always, you know, I would like draw on tests and stuff in school and then I yeah. get marked down a grade because, oh, you drew on your test. And it's like, <laughs> well, okay. But I was done. I had nothing else to do. So I'm just, it always So you just got in trouble for drawing on your tests. I did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember in seventh grade, I drew something. I, I had finished a test early, and the teacher said, well, just sit quietly if you're done. And whenever I sit quietly with a pencil and paper, I'm just going to start sketching. Yeah. And so I started drawing. He marked me down. I got like 10 points marked off on my test. For you drawing on your test? For just drawing. Yeah. Yeah. For just drawing on it. You know so what? I thought, well, that's not cool. <laughs> First of all, that actually just prompted the idea. Like, I need to actually start asking people what they got in trouble for when they were little. So that Ooh, was one. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah. like, what did you? Because was... I think I think what we got in trouble for, honestly, holds some of our superpowers. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's a, there's your next book. That's <laughs> what did you get in trouble for? Okay. So besides that, what else did you get in trouble for growing up? Um, so I was the youngest of three. I'm still the youngest of three. Mm-hmm. So you're the baby. Uh, I have an older Shout brother. out to other yep. babies. I'm the baby. Uh-huh. Yep. Babies unite. I'm the youngest. Uh, so I have an older brother and an older sister. And so I kind of like stayed back and watched them get in trouble. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so I, I, but I did, there were a few things. Uh, one that sticks out vividly in my mind was, um, my brother and I thought it would be fun to play in the car that was parked in our driveway (laughs) and we were playing like rocket ship or something. Okay. And I was the driver. So I got in the driver's seat and our, uh, driveway was on a bit of an incline. Oh, God. And I don't know why this car, the way it was designed, where you could move. Like, I don't know if this is standard, but you can move the, the gear shifter without the keys in it. And what? I moved it into neutral. And then I, I I pulled the parking brake and the car started to roll back. Oh, God. It, down the driveway. And we lived at the top of a hill. So it was like, well, it's going to it's going to start going. And so my brother starts yelling at me and I was kind of, you know, I got scared and confused as to what had happened. And so he's like, get out, get out, get out. And so we both jump out and we start, we're holding the car by the door to stop it from rolling. But I'm like six or seven years old at this <laughs> point, which he's probably nine years old at this point. Not very strong children to hold up, but you know, a, a, a big car on a driveway. So we're yelling for my mom uh, or anyone to come out and help. And I remember like trying to get one hand up, honk the horn. Oh, God. Uh, and my mom came running out, jumped in the car, pulled the parking brake. And I, I definitely got in trouble for that. I well mean. Deserved. What, what's a kid doing? What's a kid doing playing in a car? On a tr- I mean, <laughs> more than well deserved. That is frightening. Y'all could have gotten some, some, y'all could have gotten yes. hurt. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh God. yeah. I, I can't imagine what my mom was thinking at the time, but. Oh, God. Kid. That's the one that sticks out in my mind the most. So you were definitely a little troublemaker, Joey. A little bit. A little bit. Just a little Not bit. Not too much, but <laughs> just a little <laughs> vehicular danger. That's just one time. Just one time. <laughs> just, just, Just once. Just once. So when did you realize you were actually good at drawing and illustration? Like, when did this become the thing that you were like, all right, I'm actually going to pursue? Yeah. um, So I had very supportive parents. Uh, A lot of friends that I grew up with that went to art school and that I met in art school didn't really have supportive parents Mm -hmm. or families that, that supported the arts. And so luckily my parents always encouraged me to pursue, you know, if it was something that I loved and that I felt I was good at, they encouraged me to continue with it if that's what I wanted to do. So I I always took 
art classes outside of school, um, all through elementary school and middle school. And uh, when I got to high school, I had a um, an art teacher, and we could take electives in starting, I think, in tenth grade. Okay. But in ninth grade, I went to him. I had heard he was a great teacher for art. And so I talked to them and I said, I'd love to take your class, but I'm in ninth grade. They won't let me sign up until next year. Is there anything you could do about it? And he said, well, I'd love to see some of your work. And so I, okay. I had an assignment. So I went home and I put together a bunch of artwork that I had made and I brought it to him the next day and he went, he looked through it and uh, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to put you in my class. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. Mm. And he was just a wonderful, wonderful instructor. And um, he encouraged me to take classes outside of school. So like I would go to an art college that was nearby and take figure drawing classes and life drawing. And um, I took animation classes outside of school and drove all over Southern California taking different. That's one of the wonder, wonderful things about Southern California is you have the entertainment industry here. So mm-hmm. animation you know, all the art design schools and they all offer, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, opportunities to learn and, and be a part of that whole side of the arts. So yeah, I I would really say in high school is sort of where I decided this is, this is what I'm going to do, Mm. uh, what I'm, what I want to pursue. Then I had a clear goal and I graduated in high, from high school in June. And then September started uh, art school. Wow! Um, right, a- right away. So I was one of the younger people at my in my college. Most people, I guess, the average at the time, the average entrance age was like twenty three, twenty four. Okay. Was when people kind of decide what they wanted to do, so they sign up and go to this school. But I was, I was one of the few eighteen year olds. So you you had uh, this clarity way early. I did, thankfully. I know not a lot of people have that clarity early on in life, and I feel really fortunate to to know what it was that I wanted to do. So, what was what do you consider like your big break of like when you got your first professional illustration job? Hmm. My first, my first paid professional job that someone paid me money for to create artwork yeah uh, a friend of mine in high school his mom hired me to draw a picture of a building she worked at oh <laughs> and i was like you want to pay me to draw a building okay i'll do that <laughs> and um and so i did and that felt really good it was like Okay, I'll spend I'll spend some time doing this drawing, and I'll give it to you, and you're going to give me money for it. I like I like that. <laughs> um, I like that a lot. So that was got, that was that was the first time I ever got paid for money. Okay, uh, paid for for my art and uh, real money, and um, when was the I first guess? book you wrote? Or like, when was the first time you actually were like, I am officially a professional illustrator? Professional. So I had come from a background aside from children's book illustration. Uh, I studied illustration in college. Mm -hmm. I went to Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California. And um, I had the goal of working in the entertainment industry. So I worked in film and video games. And that was my career. And uh, I was a concept artist. And after I left the video game industry, um, I wanted to be an independent illustrator. I wanted to be freelance and, you know, take on different kinds of work. And so I started showing with a gallery in Los Angeles, a uh, pop culture gallery called Gallery 1988. Okay. And I showed with them for quite a few years. And... um. I had a friend, a good friend of mine is a children's book author and illustrator, and he recommended that I go to a, um, 
there was a, a conference for children's book authors and illustrators. And it was a world that I had, I wasn't very familiar with. And I thought, well, that'd be interesting. I never thought of being a book illustrator, but I, I like the idea of doing it. I like the idea of trying it. And so, um, I went to this conference and I think I'm trying to remember how soon after that I got, a, I, I got my literary agent through that conference, which was wonderful. And shortly after that, I got my first book project on a book called um, Attack Boss Cheat Code, written okay. by uh, this guy named Chris Barton. He, he's out of Texas. And I guess he was a fan of my work through that I was doing through the pop culture gallery and through conventions and stuff. And he had seen my work, and so he reached out to me to see if I'd be interested in illustrating his uh, book, which was like the ABCs of video games mm, okay and so it was an it was a nice kind of blend of well i used to work in video games i love video games and now i want to do children's book illustrations well this seems kind of like a dream project it is and and so that was kind of my first introduction to illustrating children's books was on so, that was on that project so i mean fun fact is you actually used to work on one of my favorite video games which is The Sims, yes. and we found this out a couple of weeks ago when I tweeted about yeah. The Sims, and you were like, wait, you like The Sims? I actually used to work on Sims 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was so fun. I saw you, yeah, I saw you tweeting about The Sims, and I was like, oh, wait a second. I've been playing The Sims since college, and Have I go, you? yeah, I go through spurts of not playing The Sims because when I do, mm -hmm. I am unproductive in anything else. Like, I'm the oh, person who's building a... the world for four days, and then I'm playing the whole story. <laughs> so I can only play The Sims when I am not doing a bunch of things, because it just takes over my yeah, life. Yeah, when you don't have anything to do. Right. Which has become rare. So right. I miss The Sims. <laughs> Although the new infant <laughs> update I'm excited about. So how me and Joey <laughs> got introduced is because uh, one of my longtime colleagues, Macy Robeson... Um, after little after Rising Troublemaker, no, he's right before. So I did Professional Troublemaker. It came out twenty twenty one, and then Rising Troublemaker for Teens came out last year twenty twenty two in March, no, in May. Right before it came out, Macy surprised me with an illustration of the little troublemaker who was a little lovey who like was on this. Uh, basically, she created like a concept book, and I was so enamored and floored by it. and I was like oh my god I've had the dream of having a children's book for a minute so this is such a cool vision so how was it when Macy came to you like how did that process happen because I actually haven't gotten that story either oh fun so um through the gallery that I was working with I had created a series of prints uh, uh called that I called story time yeah and the series of prints was uh, taking some of you know my favorite movies, music, TV shows, and video games, and and turning them into children's book covers, like mm. fake children's book covers. And um, I based them off of little little golden books, oh. which I used to love reading as a kid. And um, and the series did really well through the gallery. I had. Uh, the first time I did it was for, um, there was a film director named Edgar Wright. He did like Hot Fuzz, Shaun of the Dead, uh, Scott Pilgrim. So he worked with the gallery to curate a show based on, uh, with artwork based on his films. Yeah. And so they invited me to participate in this group show. And so I did, um, uh, I, I took his films and turned them into uh, little golden book covers, okay. essentially. And so they sold out the night of the show, a uh, huge online response. It was really wonderful. I got to hang out with Edgar Wright at the opening and <laughs> talk with him a bit. And he loved them. And he, he just, he stayed in touch with me over the years, which is really cool. Uh, and the gallery offered me a solo exhibition of, mm. to create, to have my own show of those pieces and expand sort of that portfolio of work. And, um, so I had been doing that, uh, they were received really well online, kind of went viral on Reddit 
Mm. Um, that kind of spread. And I, I've been continuing that series. I did a Kickstarter to collect an art book uh, mm. of all of the prints. I had done, I had done at that point, oh, maybe almost like 200 prints in oh, that series. Wow. And so I sort of became known uh, for that series. And so uh, I have an online store where I take, um, well, I don't take commissions, but occasionally <laughs> I'll get emails from people uh, who reach out and I got an email <laughs> um, from her and she said, you know, I, I have a good friend. I'd love to uh, have you do a commission. Are you available? And I had just finished up a project. And so my schedule is kind of open for the, for a couple of weeks. And I thought, yeah, I'd like to do commissions. I don't do that often. That'll be fun. And, uh, and so that's sort of how, how your, <laughs> how your piece came about. <laughs> so tell me like when you, how do you approach, uh, illustrating and taking somebody from real life into that cartoon version? What are the things that you pay attention to about them that you put, that you reflect on paper? It's going to be different for everyone, but really it's like if their personality was, you know, sometimes you see someone and right away you can kind of tell like this is a kind person <laughs> uh, or this is a not a kind person. You kind of you kind of judge someone right away when you when you look at someone, right? And yeah. um, and so I clicked on. Uh, she had sent me a link to your <clears throat> your book, and I was like, oh, I love that title. Yeah, a troublemaker. And uh, and you had the little logo, your little logo in there, and I was like, well, mm -hmm. this is fun. Okay, and then click through, and I watched your video, and I was like, oh, easy. This one's easy. <laughs> you got such a great you have such a great personality, and. It was just an easy translation. And, you know, your your outfits and your hats <laughs> and your shoes. And I was like, it's all very like, clearly visual. Uh, it, it just translates so, so clearly. Uh, I am. I'm me. an and easy so, cartoon. Sort of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. Some people are easy cartoons and it's it's great. It, it worked out really well. <laughs> I always laugh about that because I tell people that like I legit I'm an easy cartoon because I have such um, I have such strong features. One and mm -hmm. I kind of operate like a cartoon, like I kind of wear a uniform. In real life, mm -hmm. so where yeah. I'm always in the blazer, mostly in a hat, mostly right. in the color red. <laughs> so I'm kind of a walking cartoon in that way. So you pulled out right. in, in that initial cover Iconic. that you made. <laughs> Thank you for saying Iconic. that. I, look, I kind of I have a lot of things about me that you can pull out. In that initial one, you even had little Lovey wearing all the chains. <laughs> mm -hmm. The <Yeah>. watch. <laughs> The watch. I think I had the watch. Let me see. I think I have it here. You somewhere. had the watch. You had it wearing two chains. Let yeah. Two. So you, you had gold chains, mm -hmm. and then I think did they mm -hmm. give you? Did they give you hoop earrings? You gave me hoop earrings. Cause yeah. that's that's how I'm rolling, and and the studs, and it's so <laughs> funny. So when it was time to write the book, so what's interesting is I instantly posted it, and everybody was like, "I want to read this book." Like, I want to see this as a book because this is so lit. And I actually was like, OK, maybe now's the time to write the book. Now's the time to start thinking about what the story is, because I had been thinking about doing this uh, thing for a minute. So that's kind of how I went to work. And I was like, OK, so what's the story? It's interesting. I was like, what is the story about the little troublemaker? Well, she clearly has to do something that gets her in trouble. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And I, right. she has to, because that's what she's going to end up doing every time. So <laughs> when we got down to actually sit to build the world out, one of the first things that you did, you sent me a document where you had me write out, like, what are her quirks? What are her favorite things? And what does she hold dear? And it actually gave me a chance to think through, like, who I am, who I was. And then you came back with the new drawing of Little Troublemaker, and it's yeah. interesting because we've never been far from where we landed. Right. We've just made tweaks along the way. Yeah, it was pretty clear from the outset. Uh, very, you had a very defined idea of what you wanted, and it was easy to sort of sort of take that. I, I do remember I I did make you more adult at one point. 
<laughs> as yes. I was looking through. I had like a grown up version of you as as you are now. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, oh, that's too that's we're not you did a that. you did a twelve year old version too, like a twelve year old version, and then we aged her down yes. to six or seven. Correct. Yeah. And then we got along with because what y'all don't know is Joey has actually created five characters for this little troublemaker world, and we'll probably create more for future books. Um, so we created her mom, we created her sister, we created her. One of the things that we did was is we uncooled little lovey. Yeah, <laughs> we cool, we cooled her down a bit. We cooled her down where we, she was typically wearing like two earrings. We brought it down to one. We we took away her chain, even though I've actually fun fact, I've been wearing a chain since I was born. So Have you? yes, I've always had a chain around my neck, at least one. Since I was uh, born, so it, w- it was not untrue to have her wearing a chain. But I said, "Let me you're uncool a stylish her." Stylish baby. <laughs> I definitely was the kid wearing a chain with a cross around my neck at two. So it was not it was not wrong. And you also pulled pictures of me now. How do you use pictures of people mm-hmm. now for when you're creating that little version? So, um, I mean, I basically kind of take your features as an adult. And exaggerate them a little bit, simplify them, and kind of fit them into this kind of style uh, that I have created for this this character. So you know, big big head. Yeah, little kids have big heads. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. And uh, and so <laughs> and so um, you know, I gave the character a big head, and it's like your eyes. You know, you, your eyes are are iconic. I'm gonna use that word again. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have very unique and distinguished eyes. And so it was kind of like, okay, well, that's an easy translation for this yeah. character. And it's a visual cue as to like, well, this is the same person, just a kid version. And and it came through in your pictures. You'd sent me of you as a kid. I was like, oh, there she is. Accurate. A- <laughs> I literally was telling yeah. people, I was like, I promise you, the version of me that y'all see now is who I was at, as a kid. Because I sent Joey, one of the uh, pictures that I sent him was me. I think I was six. I had on a purple fedora a purple dress that had and two chains on and red lipstick. Yeah. In the picture, yes. me is six. So I was telling people like, listen, he didn't just make me a kid from being the adult. Now I was like, he looked at my kid pictures, was like, oh, <laughs> that's accurate. Yeah. This is who you are. Who I am. This is who you, who you've been all the time. And then the thing that I actually told Joey that I was like, Joey, I need you to nail it. Her haircut. So Great I made thing. a decision pretty early that I wanted. Little loving, little troublemaker to have short hair because, fun fact, there was a piece of my childhood where I actually had short hair because I don't know what I did, but my hair fell out. So I actually mm. did have short hair for a hot second there. So you actually nailed her haircut. <laughs> That's great. I took I took inspiration from your hair as it is now, mm-hmm. or as it was when we started, mm-hmm. and uh, and just kind of. I think we did a couple of different takes on it at the we time. We did. We did. There's a version of her where she her hair is, has colored tips. And I was like, she looks really cool. She looks almost too cool for a yeah. seven-year-old. So that's part of too the uncooling cool. of her. So we made right. her hair all black again. But her fade is hidden. Yeah. There's a particular there's mm-hmm. a particular page in the book that cracks me up every time I look at it. Because I'm like, yo, <laughs> little lovey's haircut is so fire. It's probably more fire than mine right now. And it's a point where she's looking in the... <laughs> Where we're seeing her from the back, she's looking into the kitchen, um, into the fridge, oh, and I yeah. was like, "You gotta respect that. That's that right there <laughs> was hitting. <laughs> it was hitting." <laughs> um, one of the I other got the things, fade right. you got the fade right, and then the other piece that you got right is jollof rice. <laughs> it it looks so good. It looks so good in as here. I was as I was working, I just like I want to eat a bowl of that right now. Yes, and I need to get a recipe from you. You I know, still need a recipe. It's so funny because a recipe is hard to give to people because of the fact that, like, most times people don't even have recipes. <laughs> they just, like, are right. on vibes. They just kind of throw it all in. Yeah. Yes. It's like lasagna, That's right? A- like, most people's lasagna recipes aren't real recipes. They just do what feels right. But yeah. that's why That's why I, at one point we were thinking about putting a jollof recipe at the back of the book. Right, 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 right. I was looking forward to that. I had played with that, and I was like, oh, man, I, what if I don't get that right? I was like, that's too much pressure. What if you don't get it right? Because it's, yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Because it's, if, it's a recipe, and it's like, you know, how much do you add in? I don't know, until it tastes good. Yes, exactly. So it was too much pressure. So I said, nah, it's cool. We ain't got to do it. Um, 
And for me, like with this book, collaborating with you was awesome because you, it's like you captured her in such a way that was true in how you showed her energy, her faces, in the how the story unfolds and how colorful it was. One of the other things that we did is we went back and forth on d- decor of her house. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I was like, I don't know. This part I don't have much opinion on, but make her house look colorful. <laughs> Which we did. We did. I think we got, we got to, you know, uh, one of the things that I love working with is bright colors. Yeah. And I saw this, you know, this is such a bright character. I thought, well, her world should be surrounded by bright colors. You don't want to, you don't want a character full of life in a dull, boring environment. Exactly. Um, we yeah. have a lot of warm colors in here. You use a lot of yellows, a lot of oranges, <laughs> like coral. It, it it is so energetic it's so fun it's like it i'm hoping kids open it and go like i gotta read this over and over again yeah like it is it's so fun i'm i'm really looking forward to it being out and you i am looking forward to to hearing how people how people like it hope, yeah you know always when you're working on a on a book you hope kids are drawn to it yeah and already I mean, I have two kids. They they really have enjoyed this book. Oh, so yay. there's two. We got two. We got two fans. <laughs> well, the um, parents.com is the one who actually uh, revealed the cover of the book. And the it. parents, the parent journalist said she read it to her four and her six-year-old. And her six-year-old cried when it ended because he didn't want it to be oh. finished. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, well, that's my a good God. sign. That's a there great sign. Go. I was like, that's oh, a, my that's God. That's the review. That's the best that's review, the review you could have. A six-year-old cried yeah. when my book ended because he did yeah. not want it to be over. Did, didn't want it to be over. He did not want it to be over. That's awesome. Like, that is the ultimate compliment, the ways in which her her world has come out and jumps out at you is incredible. So, Joey, like, I'm looking forward to more because I'm like, I already have an idea for the second one. All right. I look forward to hearing about it. <laughs> I already have the idea of what trouble she's going to get into next. How we're going to yeah, build out Yeah, what's she going to get into next? <laughs> she's going to get into something. She's going to always get into something. Like, she, she's constant, But she'll always learn a lesson and be better for it. She'll always feel yes. loved, even though she's getting into all this trouble. Like, I want to make sure that she always... Um, <laughs> She always, like, at the end of each book, kids are learning that, yes, I hear you, I know what you were trying to do, but even though it was not the right way, here's the right way to do it, but all is well after that, you know? Yeah. And one of the things that I really loved about this story is that she's kind. So when you think, when you hear Troublemaker, sometimes you kind of think, like, well, maybe, maybe this is an unkind character, but no, she's like... She is kind, and the kindness shows through in the story. And I'm I'm drawn more to kind characters, and and yeah. she's just a good kid. She's a good kid. She's, she's just kid. curious <laughs> and trying to do things on her own, which you know all kids try to do things on their own, and sometimes they're successful, and sometimes they aren't. And how do how adults react to that? Which in the story, her yes. mom reacts really well. Her mom yes. handles it very well. Yes, because she made a giant <laughs> Some, mess. She made a big mess. Giant. I have two two kids that like to make messes, and <laughs> I don't always handle it well as I should. But this book is a good reminder <laughs> to handle it well in those moments. <laughs> Listen, I was like, I'm all, parents are gonna be like, Lord, okay, I guess I got a gentle parent. But it's so interesting because I do think uh, people are gonna read it and be able to be like, all right, maybe I do need to give them a little bit more grace because they're trying hard. Yes. Yeah, and this yes. book is a good reminder of that. It, it reminds me of it constantly. Does it? Does this remind you of the Grumpy Unicorn, which is the one you typically do? A little bit, a little bit, and that's another another case. Uh, is another series I do, Grumpy Unicorn. Um, it's a graphic novel series, and um, hopefully soon a picture book. We'll see. Um, it's it's. Uh, you know, he's grumpy, but he's kind hearted. Yes. And just because you're grumpy doesn't mean that you can't be a nice person. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. No, Joey, this is awesome. <laughs> I am excited for it to be in the world. It looks amazing. The 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 book has such energy. It feels so good 
to carry around is so colorful. It's like, it makes people smile when they see it. The moment people have seen it, when I'm holding it, they're like, oh my God, this is so cool. It makes people <laughs> smile. They can't even help it. Oh, that's wonderful. I really, with the cover, I knew I wanted a bright yellow okay. cover. Yeah. I thought this is going to make it pop with the colors the rest of the colors with her clothing and skin tone and i just thought like yellow is going to pop this whole thing out and i'm glad i'm glad that it got it got approved <laughs> creating a picture book starring a little brown girl a little black girl with yeah. short hair yeah. who was overconfident uh is really important because the confidence gap starts for girls at 10 they start to lose mm. their confidence at 10 and questioning everything about them. The one mm -hmm. thing that I always want her to show up in whatever story that is being told is that her problem is the opposite that girls typically have, which is that yeah. she is very confident. She's not questioning stuff, oftentimes to a fault. So she has to learn, okay, question a little bit. Stay confident, but still question a little mm -hmm. bit. So the mm -hmm. fact that you're able to nail her, um, her spirit, her energy, you're able to nail this world was awesome it was really fun like yeah. it was such a fun process thank you i it was fun for me too thank you again for you know having me on this project and letting me work with you and it was just a just a huge honor to work with you on this i, I had such a great time and i feel like you and i worked together and kind of sure. worked together so well yep um yep 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 a lot of back and forth and it was very collaborative which i always appreciate it was very collaborative, you know, adding a little heart on her T-shirt. My goal, I actually want to see Little Troublemaker become a cartoon series. I'm going to put that dream out Let's there. Let's do it. I want to see Little Troublemaker become a, a cartoon series that people can watch on their TV screens. And her random adventures yeah. and her random lessons and her world that's going to continue to build out. That's the goal. That's the dream. That is what I'm hoping this book actually spurs. I'm with you 100%. <laughs> and I with think it. that you have created such a great uh, world here with these characters that we developed early on that mm -hmm. we don't see in this book. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, you know, there's uh, all of all of the great series, whether it's a TV show, a movie, a book, you know, they all rev revolve around a great character. And I think that Little Lovey is just a, just a wonderful little character. She she's about to be a fashion icon too because we got her wearing sandals, we got her wearing some, <laughs> we got her wearing sneakers. She got a gold chain. She yeah. got and there's a she has on a pair of pajamas. The pajamas that you actually have her in at the end of the book, I I was like I want these pajamas to be. How do we make those? Forget. Like how do we make these pajamas? Because yeah. low key I want them. <laughs> I was like her yeah. pajamas is fly. Yes. <laughs> I want them. So And her sister too. Her sister's got some good ones. She does. Like there's all these Easter eggs that people are gonna find in the background yeah. that you're not paying attention to. Look out for the Easter eggs that are in the back of every scene. And uh, there's a yeah. character that we're gonna bring out soon that is actually teased in here somewhere. So mm. y'all go ahead, find some Easter eggs. Let me know when you find them, when you get the book on May second. And Little Troublemaker May makes a mess. Yes, it is out into the world on May 2nd, 2023. But you can pre-order it now everywhere books are sold. If y'all go to littletroublemakerbook.com, we actually have resources for you to download. Once you uh, place an order for the book, we have a coloring page and we have affirmation cards. We have um, word search puzzles so you can have activities for your kids once they download this book, we're going to have a discussion guide. So just go to littletroublemakerbook.com. You will get all the latest information about the book and what we have going and the tour. So, yeah, excited. Thank you, Joey. Thank you so much for having me. This is wonderful. Shout out to Joey. He's been such a dope partner in this. Um, he is at Joe, J O. Three, the number three bot on Instagram. Feel free to follow him. Or you can go to his website, joeyspioto.com. And remember to pre-order Little Troublemaker Makes a Mess everywhere books are sold. It is out on May 2nd, 2023. So go to littletroublemakerbook.com and get all the goodies for your kids, whether it's the activity kit and whether it's the affirmation deck I want to make sure that they are also supported and they feel seen and heard. And parents, I want you to feel seen and heard too. 
So, yeah. And I'm excited for you to get it into your hands and enjoy the world of Little Lovey. 